It's really easy to see that dollar signs, especially when you've been striving and trying to get jobs and this job comes along and you're like, oh yes, I made it. It's, it, it's such a big job. Recently, I was approached by another business that sells wooden products online and they wanted to place an order. That order was for $20,000 in products. That was the initial order and they wanted $6,000 worth of products every month after. Real quick, before we get into the story, I wanna tell you about all the cool resources I have over on andybirdbuilds.com. From project files, CNC files, to download and make projects, uh, to some guides on how to sell your products, and a free guide uh, where it answers the 10 most common questions. I'll link all that in the description below if you're interested, check it out. So. About two months ago now, a company reached out to me after seeing one of my Instagram posts. They reached out through Instagram, DM'd me, and asked if I would be interested at looking into manufacturing their products. They currently get them manufactured overseas, and since I talk a lot about making stuff wholesale, I guess that's where they found me and just wanted to explore it. So initially, when they asked me uh, what I typically do, like structure-wise, price-wise, for wholesale deals, and I usually start at 50% of the retail value. It's kind of a standard thing that I've always done. Now, I've done less than that, and I've done more than that, but my starting point is 50%. Well, they kind of balked at that and said that, that there's no way that that was possible. And then I went back and said, well, what is possible? And back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So come to find out, they were having some issues with getting fulfillment from overseas. And that makes sense, because I don't know if you've heard anything, but obviously the supply chain was disrupted and lead times on getting products from overseas were really, really long and shipping costs went way, way up. So that's what they were trying to circumvent by bringing manufacturing over here. They were trying to figure out if this was even possible. And these are this, the initial questions that I asked. And I said, what kind of volume? And they said, uh, 2,000 to 10,000 units per month kind of blew me away a little bit like whoa so after I actually saw the product we figured out the volume I was a little hesitant on the volume they were a little hesitant on the pricing model and so talks went cold fast forward to two weeks ago now the same company reached out to me and said hey we're getting ready to place a large order and we're just wanted to revisit this and see uh, if we could work anything out so the second time they reached out they said what about doing 2,000 units uh, initially, and then 600 a month after that. And I start, started to think, okay, well, that's, I, I could, 2000's a lot, but I could figure it out. But they came back and they said, hey, we need them for $10 a piece, and that is shipped to our warehouse in Texas. And I was like, 10 times 2000 is 20,000. I was like, that's a lot of money. And then $6,000 a month after that? Okay, but then, I remembered the numbers that I crunched. I'd have two to four dollars into building one of these in materials alone. I would have about the same into labor, and that's a little bit of an unknown as well because I don't know how far I can scale these and what kind of efficiencies I can get to. So let's just say we're at, let's split the difference, say three dollars for materials, three dollars for labor, and then I have to ship them to Texas. I'm in Kentucky, so there is not enough meat on the bone at $10. Just roughly looking into those estimates, like, yeah, it's just not possible. And I didn't slam the door. The door is still open eventually. Maybe there's another product that they need that, you know, I can do more efficiently or I do know more about. This tray right here, could it be done on my CNC? Yes. Could it be done more efficiently other ways? I think so. For hypothetical reasons, let's just say I we negotiated a price and it was $20 a piece. That might be high for you, that might be low for you, that's not the point. The point is, is that we came to an agreement. The question then becomes, okay, how am I going to get this done and what is it gonna take, right? Well, something at this scale would literally take all my time initially. I would have to stop creating YouTube videos, I'd have to put other projects to the side. I already have other obligations that I have to meet um, business-wise. So you have to ask yourself, uh, okay, the price is good, we agree on the price, how am I gonna get this done? Like I said before, this involves either contracting it out to another uh, woodworker or hiring employees. And that also means 
investment on my part. Even if we could agree on price, is it something that I want to do? Is it worth the money? And those are all questions that you, you have to ask yourself. Is this something I want to do? Is this going to take me where I want to go? Is this going to help me further what I'm trying to do? Because it's really easy to see the dollar signs and the dollar signs might be enough and that's okay. But it's really easy to see that dollar signs, especially when you've been striving and trying to get jobs and this job comes along and you're like, oh yes, I made it. It's, it, it's such a big job. And hopefully you do the numbers ahead of time and realize, oh, I'm not gonna make money on that. Rather than doing just saying yes to it and then doing the numbers afterwards and being like, wow, I didn't make any money on that. I did all that work and didn't make any money and everybody else made money. Overall, this was a great reminder of it's really important to figure out what you want to do and what your goals are and to be real with yourself of what you're currently capable of. If I would have said yes to this job, I would have been making everybody else money and I wouldn't have been making any money myself. Actually, it would have cost me money to make this order. I wouldn't have been making $20,000. I would have been making other people a portion of that $20,000. The lumber supplier gets paid, the, uh, the finish I use, they get paid, the employees that I would use get paid, and the purchaser of the product is gonna get paid. Just because you have work does not mean you're making money. You need to remember that you need to be making money too. After all, you're the one creating the product. As this event was happening in real time over several months, I discussed it with the members of the CNC Inner Circle. The CNC Inner Circle, if you don't know, is a private group of CNCers that have like-minded goals. It's really cool to be able to talk to people that have like-minded goals and to get feedback and to share with them uh, different wins and failures. Um, if this is something that you're interested in, I'll leave a link in the description as well for you to check out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.